Hello, and welcome to the Hour of the Time. This is Anne, and we're having a great time. Boy, we sure are having a great time. And I know all of you out there are going to wish that you were here once you hear what's been going on. Craig Smith was here today, and he gave us an hour talk on precious metals. And uh, Houston, who you just heard open the uh, program tonight, talked for two hours on nutrition and health. And uh, I think I did the rest of the day after two hours of uh, registration this morning, but I'm so tired right now, I really don't remember. And uh, we're going to get right into the swing of things here. And uh, you better be ready. Because here's a... Humorous fellow, that Anthony J. Hilder. Welcome. Bill, and I'm taking a look at the presidency right now. I want to see this man serve out his time in the big house, not in the White House. <laughs> and we have to get a message across to the people. If we reach out and touch beyond our fingertips, if we develop the capacity to look beyond the horizon, to see beyond our sight, if we get the gut issues down to the street level and bring them out so that we communicate with those we have not communicated with before, we can incite this revelation, which will stop this revolution that we are in right now. Now, I know what you're talking about because we communicate regularly, but the listening audience doesn't uh, relate to street level. What, what are we talking about? They're going to have to relate to street level. We have to end the confusion that exists at the street level. We have to bring out about, we have to bring about a fusion amongst blacks and whites, Chicanos, of all people. We have to speak in many men's language and still speak our own. And we have to do this right away. Now we're getting to the meat of the matter. What you're talking about is the bringing about of chaos amongst the people, well, warring with each other in order to create what? Ordo ab chaos. Uh, it's order out of chaos. You see it on the Masonic temples. It's all around the country. They're doing it. They're trying to bring about a panic project insofar as the UFOs they have developed. They are trying to bring about a crisis creation in the street. About five or six weeks ago, the Central Intelligence Agency brought in between 80 and 100 tons of heroin into this country. The price of heroin has dropped in the major urban areas. It is now a very popular drug. And they're going to string this out for another two to three weeks I believe they're going to pull the plug, triple the price, and we will have chaos. We will have control. Because if we, and I say we, the people who are listening to this program, 
allow this thing to happen, if we do not get up off our backsides and do something about it, then we're going to be responsible because we have this opportunity. We're, we're not speaking to Ice Tea's producer. Yeah, Ice Tea's producer. And you've spoken to him. Mm -hmm. Africa is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, Ice Tea, Ice Cube, uh, a lot of these people in the hip hop community are getting this message. Uh, you, know, you go into um, uh, the Glam Slam which is owned by Prince in Los Angeles. You take a look up on the wall, 14-foot pictures from slides of the secrets of the Masonic Order, the New World Order by Hefferson, uh, your book, um, your book, Behold the Pale Horse, is popular amongst Muslims. I mean, these are the, they hate whitey, the God's mm -hmm. Almighty, I mean, the Black's Almighty guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are now getting together for the first time and it's amazing. It's happening now. And this, this is, we, we are literally, and we're, we're seeing a turnaround. We're seeing a bringing together of the communities. I was in Las Vegas at the uh, Moulin Rouge Hotel, Black Hotel. I went up with Africa Islam. I went up with John Henderson, a fellow who's in the, in, the, in the crypts. I looked over at him, not to embarrass him, but I said, hey, about two and a half years ago, brother, you were out in the streets, and you were looting, and you were robbing, and this guy had been on the streets selling dope since he was about nine years old. He'd been in, you know, he'd done time in the big house, mm -hmm. where I think Clinton should be. Now, we see this fusion coming about. We see the pickup of the information. You are becoming a cult figure. Oh, and God, don't use the word cult. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this seriously now, Bill. You shouldn't be embarrassed about this. Your book is becoming like a household word. It's a, sort of the Bible of the New World Order of investigators mm -hmm. in the black community. Farrakhan is putting it out. Do you think that this is a flash in the pan, or do you think people are really beginning to realize that we've been manipulating in, into, manipulated into hating each other to help this process along? Well, there's no question we've been programmed. There's no question. But do people, are people really understanding this and coming around to the fact that we don't have to hate each other, or is this something... Oh, that, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, I went out and spoke the other night. Uh, I did a thing in uh, KJLH. Uh, from five to six in the morning, so I was going to just do a little speaking uh, bit over at the uh, this health food store, on Crenshaw, mm -hmm. South Central. We drove up into the parking lot. The parking lot was jammed, and there was no no spaces left. There were people in cars, and it was a mess. We had to pull out into the street. I come up. The people are they're jammed into this place. They're they're stepping out into the parking lot. I'm saying, what the hell's going on? Maybe somebody, you know, is coming on before I. I, I weave my way, way through this, this crowd. And I take a look at the screen, and it's Jordan Maxwell on the screen. I'm saying, my God. I said, where's the other, you know, it must be some other speaker. From just a little teeny bit of information. The thirst is such. They're like a sponge, and they finally got the big picture. I mean, at least a portion of it. Mm -hmm. And they want to get the big message. And they are, I go down to Esawan Bookstore on La Brea in South Central, or in, in what is considered to be South Central Inglewood. Behold the pale horse. The information is getting out there. Eustace Mullins book, The New World Order. Well, you know, it's incredible that the area that you just talked about, that you went down and couldn't find a parking place, you got out of the car, you're fighting your way through a crowd. Uh, most of the audience probably does not realize that that is a predominantly black area of Los Angeles where white people just don't go down at night and get out of a hey, car. Hey, listen, you know, I was the only, uh, yeah, I was, you know, whitey, right? Uh -huh. And when I say, uh, I hate whitey to blacks, the almighty, that's generally the, the, the attitude because I think the, uh, the hatred amongst blacks against whites is about ten times that amongst, uh, that exists uh, in white in the white neighborhoods against blacks mm -hmm. because they're in a minority position and they're seeking respectability they're seeking authority they're seeking their place in the sun and they deserve it but 
there are white men that are the enemy. It isn't the white man that is the enemy, mm -hmm. but it is white men that are the enemy. And these particular white men that I'm referring to are the mutual enemy of both the black community and the white community. Because it isn't a matter of color. It's a matter of good versus evil. It's a matter of freedom versus slavery. And these people, and I, and I would say 60, 70 percent of the, uh, the audience were Muslims. Mm -hmm. One fellow got up and said, hey, well, you know, this is my house, you know, and well, I, I want to speak here and, you're, I'll, you know, I don't appreciate what, you know, you're coming up and saying. And one fellow named Malik X, gang leader, who's now doing, he's been picked up by Fox uh, Television. He says, uh, hey, we invited him here. We have brought him in. We want to hear what he has to say. In essence, uh, to the a black brother who is a Muslim over the, uh, the counter, shut your mouth. Another fellow says, hey, we check this guy out. And we see Muslims now making an association with the patriotic field. And this is an announcement. This is the first time that this, this has been announced to the world. And it is announced to the world. Mm -hmm. Because it isn't the white man that is the enemy, but it is white men, certain white men. We have to identify they. And these people who are producing a lot of these hip-hop tunes have now pick, uh, picked up some lyrics that I did called They. And they're putting the music to it. And it's going to be at the street level. It's a gut issue. We have to identify they. They are the enemy. And I'm talking about the evil archie. The oligarchy of evil that controls this country. Well, we've uh, um, this audience knows exactly who they is, unless they just started listening tonight. Because we've been uh, what over two years of broadcasting. We've done 41 hours on the uh, mystery. We we've uh, the mystery schools. We've uh, we've exposed exactly who they are, and uh, we've we've connected the. Uh, of the link to uh, to the racial strife in this country and other countries, uh, because basically it's a, it's a group of people who believe that there is a superior race and that that race is the white race. This is not what all white people believe. This is not what all Caucasians believe. This is what this minority of people. Well, I don't. Think, I don't think it's a matter of them believing that the white race is superior. Oh yes. I think. Absolutely. I think it is them believing that they are superior to everybody. They want to be the gods of earth. And I say in the land of the blind, in the land of the blind, the one eye is king, and the Illuminati eye, the eye of Lucifer, which sits on top of the mm -hmm. pyramid, has to be put out. We have one objective, and maybe our view should be myopic at this particular point. We need to strike out that eye. We need to cripple that monster in our land. We need to take away their capacity to print currency, debt-bearing currency at point of origin, and economically enslave us. We have to do something that has never been done before. We have to create our own currency. We have to circumvent the enslavement that has been planned for us. And we have to do this now, that's going to happen with you out there. You're listening to this program. We put out a film, Millennium 2000. It gives the big picture in two hours. It's not as good as it can be. The next one's going to be better. But this particular tape is now in Germany. I was with Mr. Namiki from Moo Magazine from Japan last night in Los Angeles sat down with him for three or four hours. He's picking up on this material. Last December, in fact, your picture was in Moo, Moo Magazine last December. You didn't know that. No. I've got it here. <laughs> I want you to see it. Uh, no, I didn't know that. 32 pages of information explaining the whole damn thing. Mind control from womb to tomb, these individuals, this oligarchy wants it all. There isn't anything that we have. There isn't anything that you've got or ever, ever thought of having, or ever hoped to have, that they're not planning on taking away. They want it all. 
they want it all. We've got to understand who they are. And the Millennium Tape does that. I'm plugging my tape because I think it's good and it does it out. And it, I've got a, a, a letter in from Ethiopia. Here's a fellow, he's writing me, he says, look, there's seven million people. Seven million of us are dying. And the relief agencies are over here, but they're not doing anything. Is it because we are useless eaters? And you, you got to think about that. The self-esteem of a once proud people, the Ethiopians, are now down to that level. Because this oligarchy of evil do, I mean, they, they do think that you were useless eaters. And there isn't anything that they won't do to take everything you've got away. And we have to, to change things from just, change our position from, from being defensive to being offensive. There isn't any battle that's been fought anywhere at any time over anything, anywhere, that's been won defensively. Now you sound like me. That's absolutely correct. Uh, there is no defensive position that cannot be overcome. We have to get involved in the psychopolitical war. We have to get this big picture. And the one thing about the Millennium Tape, it gives the big picture. Because people are running around with all of these uh, jagged pieces of this political jigsaw puzzle. And they don't make any sense. They can generally get the, the straight lines of the box. But they, if they haven't seen the picture, it's just too damn complicated. And they turn on rerun of Lucy. Or the honeymooners or something, something like that. The people are involved in sports. They're involved in, uh, you know, a dozen different things that keeps taking them away. And the President of the United States is going off to Europe to, 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 to grandstand. Then he's doing the thing with Haiti, the grandstand. I'm saying that we have to impeach the President of the United States for high treason, and we had better do it now before they terminate him. And I think the, the likelihood of them terminating him to make him a martyr, to put forth the gun legislation or gun confiscation through the crime bill is a very valid thesis. I said this about Kennedy, John F. Kennedy before he died, six months. I was about three months off with Martin Luther King and five days with Bobby Kennedy. I think that the, the danger that could occur if some of their Manchurian candidates or one of their Manchurian candidates is programmed and goes in to take out Bill Clinton, we can kiss it goodbye. So by talking about it, it triggers the trap and stops it from happening. Well, I certainly hope you're right. Uh, the fact that, uh, that Clinton has cut the uh, British power structure out of international politics in his last two trips I would tell me that he set himself up for, for a big fall. Well, he's an embarrassment to the oligarchy of evil, to, to this evil archy. When one becomes a liability, they take that liability out. They're not going to risk everything that they've worked for for the past 200 years on simple, some simple Simon ass. <laughs> They're going to take that guy out in one way or the other. You take a look at Time magazine. You see Clinton talking to Hillary, and his eye is poking out behind the E. You know, in time is skull and bones. Mm -hmm. Time Warner, skull and bones. Mm -hmm. Brotherhood of Death. Mm -hmm. They had to go through 4,500, 5,000 paint, uh, photographs to find one like that where he looks like a criminal. Then they have white water, and he's going over the, uh, the, the falls. And this white water is simply a white wash. And Fisk is the attorney, was the attorney for... Clark Clifford, for God's sake, from the Council on Foreign Relations, had a BC uh, CI. Mm -hmm. It all fits in. And there's so many murders, or I should say, no, no, pardon me, suicides. Clinton size? What do you call that? I mean, how many people have been suicided around Clinton? Too many. 20, 28 at last count. 28 at last count. I've heard the numbers up to 30. Well, we have 28 that we can... Oh, I shouldn't say suicide, but I mean, uh, there, there has been outright murders. People have been gunned down. The two boys laid out on the track. They said, well, they said that was 
they they said they were just a couple of crazy kids. Oh, it was good. We all know the kids just go out and put their heads on the railroad track when the, the train's coming down, right? Who so. Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, the insanity of it is that they expect us to believe this. Well, that's exactly right. They do expect us yeah. to believe it, and most people out there will believe it. H.L. Mencken once said, one can never underestimate the intelligence of the American public. Yeah, I met a, here, a fellow here tonight, Glenn, was talking about the 2010 book by Arthur C. Clarke, mm -hmm. last chapter, Lucifer Rising. And then at the epi and they t he talks about the bringing about of a, uh, a binary star system by exploding Jupiter. You've and done it again. You've taken a quantum leap from what you were talking right, about into unknown territory, and everybody right. out there shaking their heads, saying, yeah, "What the hell yeah, is going yeah, on yeah, here?" Well, yeah, I've got to say, <laughs> you know, you take a look. You take a look at um, Time Magazine once again. But you know what they're about to do by just taking a look at this magazine. And I want you to take a look at it. I want you to take a look at Newsweek. Because they're going to let you know exactly what they're going to do tomorrow. They're going to put it in that magazine. Because that is for the spin control. And when they just recently put on this whole thing about the Shoemaker Levy 9. Mm -hmm. And the whole big deal about Jupiter. It is it's an indicator that that Galileo mission, which left in 1989, and will be up at Jupiter and will go around, I think it's due to arrive December 7th, and Glenn brought out this. It's already it there. His son. His son brought Anthony, it Anthony, it's yeah. already there. Yeah. NASA made a big yeah. mistake, you see. They said that it was on the backside of Jupiter to photograph the impact of the Shoemaker-Levy comet. Therefore, it must be there, and it must be in orbit for it to be able to do that. So they've lied to us all along. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, God, I, Bill, I can't, but, you know, you telling me that the government lies to us? Never. I am mean, you know. I wouldn't tell you that. No, I mean, we, 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 everybody <laughs> listening to the show knows that the government does. They, they, they didn't lie to us about the B-2, did they? Oh, of course not. Are they, are they F-117? No. Are they SR-71? Never. Or the anti-gravitational flying disc up there? Uh-uh. They never lied about this? No, no, no. They told the truth. They said it's definitely, UFOs are not a threat to the national security. And there is no effort to investigate UFOs. The reason is, is because they know exactly what they are, and they aren't a threat to the national security because we own them and we operate them, at least some well, of them. Wait, 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 listen, i got to correct you. You're saying we own them. We don't own them. They own them, and we have to expose they, because if they are allowed to do what they intend to do with regards to us, we're history. I did a little thing... With well, taxes. they got they got some of my taxes, you know. I, I don't pay all the taxes. I pay the legal taxes, and they got some money out of me for paying the legal taxes, and I feel that I own some of that stuff. Yeah, but they they, they feel that they own you. That's, what they, they, in, in fact, that's what they feel. You know, I, I'm looking in my pocket here, and I have a thing. Uh, in fact, uh, we are in St. John's, and I don't know if the people out there can see this, but it says the Mark Card. Multi-technology, what is that, uh, A-R-C, reader card? Mark of the Beast, Department of Defense. You know, you came in late today. I covered that. You did? Two hours. But <laughs> the people who are listening to the show. That's right. Haven't seen it, but you've seen it. Well, I want them to know what they're missing. You're, not being you're seeing it through your mind, and yet you are missing it, because you should be here. The Mark card. M-A-R-C, the Mark of the Beast. And this ties in with the computer, that, uh, what is it, battle engagement thing in the, 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 the one over there in, the, in Brussels, the, the Beast, the Mark of the Beast. I mean, it's, it's overt, and yet it's covert in its stealth. Nothing is hidden. I've said that over and over again. Anybody who wants to look can find everything that there is to know. But you've got to take off the blinders. That's right, and you have to look. But that's work. Most people don't like work. Let, let's, let's, let's put this in perspective. Okay. You are a book of the universe. You have no right to be
rapidly amid the noise and waste, and remember what comfort there may be in owning a piece thereof. Avoid quiet and happy persons unless you are in need of sleep. Rotate your tires. Speak glowingly of those greater than yourself, and heed well their advice, even though they be turkeys. Know what to kiss, and when. Consider that two wrongs never make a right, but the three do. Wherever possible, put people on hold. Be comforted that in the face of all aridity and disillusionment, and despite the changing fortunes of time, there is always a big future in computer maintenance. with those persons closest to you. That lemon on your left, for instance. Be assured that a walk through the ocean of most of gold would scarcely get your feet wet. Fall not in love, therefore. It will stick to your face. Gracefully surrender the things of youth, birds, clean air, tuna, Taiwan, and let not the sands of time get in your life. Hire people with hooks. For a good time, call 606-4311. Ask for Ken. Take heart amid the deepening gloom that your dog is finally getting enough cheese. And reflect that whatever misfortune may be your life, it could only be worse in the walking. <laughs> talking about you man that's entertaining and i'm a talk show host <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah bill's putting it together for you he's making it nice and simple but what are you doing about it what are you doing about it when you go to a store do you still buy the product from communist china if you're not reaching 10 people a week then you're not working. And you had better work to save your ass. I don't care whether it's black or white or yellow or red or polka dot. You had better get up off of it. And you had better get involved in this particular war. Because it is in this particular war that your life depends. If you don't win it, you're going to die or be a slave. There is no question, and the time has gone. If you think that you can wait and get engaged in this fight next month or next year, you'd better think again. Now, how do you convince people who are, are begging now for socialized medicine, who think that they deserve free medical care? And uh, how can you talk to people like that when they really believe it's free? Well, first of all, there isn't anything that the government gives that the government does not first take away. 
What it takes away, it takes away with force, the threat of force, or violence, or threat of violence, or incarceration, or threat of incarceration. If they give you something, by God, they're going to take a hell of a lot more away. If you get free health care, you better learn how to spell that health care. It's H-E-L-L-T-H. H-E-L-L-T-H. That's how you spell Hillary's health care. And if you liked Hitler, you're sure as hell going to love Hillary. And if you're talking about one of those mandatory um, immunization shots for your child, now they've got that biochip that's ready to go. It's sort of like a smart car, but you've got to be the dumbest mother, the dumbest father, the dumbest of the dumbos if you're going to go along with that plan. But you have to get, now that you've got that message, you have to get that message to the guy in the bar. Oh, and you, and you, you see those little strips in the, in the, in the, uh, on the left-hand side? What if you were just to sort of um, tear those? We've got to take a break. Okay. And uh, while we're taking this break, I want you to hear uh, Anthony's latest effort at uh, communicating and reaching his 10 people. Listen carefully. Comrade Clinton is marching us towards the millennia. His agenda, a new world order. He intends to foreclose upon the people and the property of the United States of America. First time I listened to that, I didn't really hear all the words. We have to reach beyond our fingertips. We've got to touch. We've got to put it down into simple, plain English. We've got to put it in every man's language and still keep our own. Bill, I just did uh, another piece which is being recorded. It's called Ticket to Hell. Wall Street jitters. Our factories closing down, gold's going up because the dollar isn't sound. While the Fed's dealing from the bottom of the deck, businesses are foreclosing and the economy's a wreck. But the president is saying that all is going well when you know in your heart it's all going to hell. And Congress is demanding more and more legislation. The media is pushing for your total gun confiscation. Uh, I'm not going to get into the chorus because um, there has to be some sort of element of surprise when these things come out. 
we have to get to the people who are not patriots. We have to get to the people because they're concerned about the lives of their children, their wives, their mothers, their brothers. If for no other reason, simply to save their own ass from destruction, this is so close. I think it's. I think it's within. It could be within days before we are beyond the point of no return. We have to get this big picture out there. And if people get the tape and they, they bootleg it, so what? If they get the audio tapes and bootleg them, so what? I had dinner with a gentleman here, Tom, this evening. He said, can I make some copies and put it in, in this whole thing in part of a big package to get to my friends? I said, yes. You've got to do that. You've got to take the initiative. You, you've got to do what you've never done before. And if you get on a talk show, you're going to be talking to maybe five, ten thousand, in some cases, a million and a half people. You can reach a million, you can reach more people on one show with one call than if you talk to people on a daily basis for every hour the rest of your life. You've got to do that. You've got to become, you've got to get involved. You've got to be part of the solution. And we've got to do away with this thing called the United Nations. And I'm advocating that we form a free world alliance. And I know the show goes out throughout the world. We have to recognize the independent, tribal, linguistic, religious, racial, and political nation states. We have to independently do this. We have to become sovereign and secure within our own land. In other words, it's not a matter of uniting, uniting to dissolve our differences because it's really divided we stand and united we fall. And I ask not what our country, well, I ask, don't do this. I, I, I'm the total opposite of John F. Kennedy. I say, ask what your government can do for you, not what you can do for your government, because you, you are the master and your government must be the servant. When Kennedy came up with that line, Ask not what your government can do, your country can do for you, but mm. what you can do for your country. That wasn't his. He stole it from Adolf Hitler. Direct quote. But yet the people are so blind in their adoration of certain... Wait, wait, wait a minute, you just blew my mind because uh, you're saying that John F. Kennedy stole that quote from, from Adolf, Adolf Hitler. Hitler. Adolf Hitler. <laughs> oh, Anthony, you never fail to amaze me, and I never know what you're going to say next. <laughs> but I'm but, glad you're here. But you got to you got to think about this. Well, really, I mean, look, ask what your government can do for you. Well, right, but right. your government's supposed to be the servant. Yeah, I know. But, but we have become we become the servants to our to our government, yeah. and it's not our government; it's their government. We have to explain who they are. That's right. I'll tell you the truth, I don't want anything from the government, and I don't think anybody else should either, except that they should just do the job that was set for them without trying to take everything, without trying to uh, but they, control everything. But they want it all. But it's the nature of any government to grow and garner control and power as if there are no controls on it. There's 67,000 pages of left legislation in 1960, uh, what, uh, 92, 25,000, 2,500 uh, different acts. Mm -hmm. These are all decreasing your freedom. And they're at it again. They are taking this piece by piece. It, we're like a giant salami. And they, they're just taking off slice after slice after slice. And you're Shade, allowing it. Shades of Osiris. So what are we going to do? We've got to, we have to. I think we ought to slice that yeah, salami yeah, some yeah, more yeah, to yeah. tell you the truth. Uh, I'll tell you what I want to do. <clears throat> Uh, let me, I'm going to plug my, my tape, if I may. Go ahead. If you would like to reach me, Anthony J. Hilder, H-I-L-D-E-R, at P.O. Box 1122, that's 1122 Malibu, California. And they, there is a zip. It's 90265. I'm going to repeat it. P.O. Box 1122, Malibu, California, 90265. I'd like to, you to, to get one of the Illuminati tapes, America's Illuminati tapes, Millennium 2000. 
You know, speaking of the Illuminati tapes, uh, quite a few years back, you produced the Illuminati trilogy, the three records set done by Myron Fagan. Myron Fagan. Now, a lot of people now may not know who you are, but they may recognize who you are when they know that. Because that was a pretty famous, that was a pretty big step there. It at was that. at that particular time the best selling, the, the uh, most widely heard uh, political document in the history of the world. But in 1967, when I did that, I knew that you had to get the message. You had, you had to get the big picture. And through the Illuminati CFR records, you got the big picture. You discovered that the enemy was not external, but internal. Because communism is not a creation of the masses to overthrow the banking establishment. It's a creation of the banking establishment to overthrow and enslave the people. Right. It was never run from Moscow, Havana, or Beijing. It was always and is now run from New York, London, and Washington, D.C. That's correct. You've got to turn this whole thing around. You've got to change your position from defensive to offensive. What was it Pogo said? I have found the enemy. And the enemy is us. That's right. We, we've got problems. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's putting it mildly. <laughs> but, but all we have to do is... Not is, now, dear, I have a headache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, have, we, have, we have to change our attitude. Uh, rather than being screwed, we have to be the screwer rather than the screwy. And it's quite fitting that you brought that up. Because we have to impregnate the people of this planet with freedom. They have to understand that freedom is choice and choice is freedom. That's what it's all about. We have to have a free world alliance. This must come about. Now, you may be in Saudi Arabia, you may be in Syria, you may be in Bangladesh, or Bobutaswana, listening to this message tonight. I'd like you to write me. Anthony J. Hoover, P.O. Box 1122, Malibu, 90265. Let's discuss this. I'll go anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Hell, I've come out here to this section of, of, of the world and I see a group of people out here tonight that are patriots true and true the finest the tallest and I might say the meanest <laughs> gang that I, that I have seen these people are like uh, they're tenacious as pit, uh, pit bull, bulls they simply have got the big picture they've got the enemy by the throat and they want to shake it now, that's what you have to do. You've got to get involved. You've got to come out when Bill has one of these. Uh, well, this is an historic meeting. This is the first one. There will be many others. And this center is coming together. The library is coming together. And I told Bill tonight, I said, I've got a library that was given to me, but it's, it's not being put to use. I'm not doing what I should do. And it's wrong for me to keep it where it is kept. And uh, I'm going to put it on loan here to uh, the center, the intelligence center. And you, if you have books, if you have an endowment or you have something that's sort of sitting around there, that can be, that, where you can contribute to this particular cause, you need to support this particular ministry of information because there's nobody like Bill Cooper in the world. And if you've been listening to this program, you'll realize that. I've got a friend, uh, we'll just call him Ev, who listens to this show religiously. And God bless his soul, brilliant man. Yeah. He is working nightly, generating new ideas to make these ideas palatable to the public. And I'm not going to get any further into Ev, but other than God bless you, brother. I know you're listening tonight. Well, thank you. Thank you for those uh, kind words. Uh, and thank you very much for the donation of your library on loan here so that people will have access to it. If you don't get involved, folks, this is what's coming. The sound you hear is dripping blood. This is the start of Black Sunday. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I love it. <laughs> Cut the fat off the back of a baboon. Boil it down to a pound, get a spoon. That's Tim at Katie's fixing dinner. Who's the eye for a fly flying backwards? Take the jaws and the paws off a coon. Take your time, I ain't flying for good cooking. Cause the rest of this mess ain't good looking. Take the fleas from the knees of a demon. Tell your pal the gal will come to me. Put a feast from the beast of the mouth out. They may cry from the fire and the no doubt. It's a test for the bad for who stays. And the feast from the beast of the mouth out. Brush your teeth with a piece of a goose toenail. At the death, feel the breath of a drunken jail. Pull a fell off your friend with a razor blade. In the night, change the mind, bring back yesterday. Check your hip, bite your lip, and shoot your mother in law. I don't know these Pull guys. Pull a stew, drink some elbow soup, and have a ball. Get him straight, don't be late, it's time for mad fun. Beats in the mouth, mouth has begun. Ah! Screaming Jay Hawkins. I bet most of you never heard that. Well, I know that we have to communicate, and we are doing that. Thanks to some of these guys in the hip-hop uh, community who are now picking up on the Illuminati. In fact, it was down at the uh, this convention. Uh, I should say this introduction to the whole thing. And their their program was titled Secret Societies Present the New World Order. And these big 14-foot pictures were flashing on the screen. This is not the same one at the Grand Slam, mm -hmm. which is happening every Saturday night. But this is downtown Los Angeles at the Variety Club. And uh, in the break, I mean, I could hardly hear anything. These guys are coming up and says, "Hey man, you got the uh, you got the Illuminati Jack?" I, I said, uh, uh, I, <laughs> I, I, "I'm dumbfounded." I, as a talk show host, I didn't know what to say. These guys are coming up and asking me if I've got the Illuminati, if I've got more of the information that uh, you're putting out on a daily basis, mm -hmm. because they are getting the message. Now, if they are getting the message. Why can't you get the message to the guy across the street, to the neighbor? Why can't you play a Millennium 2000 tape? Why can't you get somebody involved? If you just got one person, that doubles your chance of survival. It doubles your chance. If you get ten people a day, or ten people a week, and you can do that through talk radio. Anthony, they got a, this around. they got a chicken in their pot. They got two cars in the garage. They got a television set in every room. Why in the world do they want to get involved in this stuff? Because their ass is going to be your ass and the chicken's going to be fried. Well, that's a pretty good answer. You suppose they don't like fried chicken? I don't think they're going to like a fried ass. In other words, they're going to lose what they've got. Oh, well, there isn't anything that they've got that not planning to take away. In fact, um, in the Ordo Cab Player, uh, Ordo Ab Tail, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. the Ordo oh. Cab Player, <laughs> Ordo uh, Ab uh, Play It, uh, there, uh, <laughs> Mr. DJ. Um, thank you, Bill, for you know introducing this song to uh, not only the nation but the world. There's a message in there. What's the name of it, by the way? Ordo Ab Tail. We sat there in the middle of the night, just five, six, seven in the morning, you know, doing, putting out, I was putting in all of these voices and with the uh, expanders and things that make you sound like a chipmunk and going back and forth and so we could get the exact feel. Mm -hmm. And I remember calling you up in the middle of the night and I said, uh, Bill, I've missed something. What have I missed? Remember? Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. you contributed. In fact, uh, some of the lyrics that are in Order of Chaos came as a result of Bill Cooper. In fact, at the very last, I think, that they talked about, about uh, uh, and listened into Coop. Something like that. Yeah, that was a surprise. 
But you got to do that. We have to expand this show. We have to expand shows like this around the world. What I would like to do, I'd like to go over to some other nation where I would be, where I would feel freer than I do here and go on world radio. Well, you realize what you just said? Yeah. And talk about freedom for the world, mm -hmm. for the planet. If necessary. Yeah, but this is not a free nation, Bill. Oh, I'm well aware of it. This yeah. nation isn't free. Yeah. I have people call me all the time. I'd like to get involved, but I can't because I'm afraid of getting on somebody's list. And I say, well, what does that say about America? I thought you were free here. Why are, what are you afraid of? Well, you know, you have to look at yourself internally, at what's happening within you. If you don't have any guts to stand now when you have an opportunity of winning, what type of guts are you going to have to defend yourself and your family when there's no chance of winning? There's only one option that's given you, and that's to die or be a slave. Die or be a slave. For freedom to live, they must die. Politically, economically, physically, they have to be taken out. This eye, the eye of the Illuminati octopus has to be eliminated because they are in the murder business. In Rwanda, the blacks that are dying there have been financed in the war on both sides by they. They want them to kill each other. They do the not. They do not. They do not supply the medical needs when it is necessary. Clinton comes and makes it look like he's a big hero after yeah. they died. That's right. Oh, I, we're going to do something now. We're going to do something now. Well, he did. He made yeah. sure that the population problem was taken care of, and uh, uh, the useless eaters are disappearing in Rwanda. And uh, as soon as enough of them have died, we'll just have a major effort to save those people, won't we? No. Just like we did in other places. How many years were people dying in Ethiopia? Seven million. I got, I got the letter right here, Bill. Before, before we finally got concerned and sent some food over there. But it's always too late. That's right. It, well, it's too it's late plain. for a reason. That's of why they're having yeah, a meeting right. in Cairo to and, get rid of the population. And then the drought has been, you know, you have weather modification to bring about a drought. To starve the people into submission. To starve them into death. Yeah, but you know, Americans think that this doesn't apply to me. I don't have to get concerned about this. But if they read the report that Carter signed during his presidency called Global 2000, the United States' answer to the population problem, they'll see in there that the United States government considers the United States of America overpopulated by over 100 million people. Well, they want to reduce the world's population by 1,250,000,000 million people. And what happens after Tiananmen Square? Bush comes over and gives more aid and trade to the communist Chinese. If you are so stupid to go into a store and buy something made in communist China, then you deserve the death that you get. Because not only are you going to lose your job, you're going to lose your life. You're going to lose your child to this oligarchy of evil. And we have to incite a revelation. We have to get up and we have to make this happen. Please write me. Anthony J. Hilder, P.O. Box 1122, Malibu, California, M-A-L-I-B-U, California, 90265. If you need Illumina, the, by the way, the uh, Millennium tapes are $33 both paid. And I send in a free, a free audio for a reason. Because there's something that's new that's happening all the time. I want to keep people current. Mm -hmm. It's not the money. It's not the money. It's the message. You've got to get the message across, regardless of how you do it. If you don't have the money, say, listen, say, I can't afford that or, you know, whatever. Tell me the problem and I'll, I'll accommodate. Yeah, he will, too. He definitely will. So do it, folks. Order the tape. It's a good tape. I've, uh, in fact, I carried it for a while until we ran out. Well, I'll just have to get more. Yeah. And mm -hmm. more. And more. Bill? Yes, sir. I think that we're going to be taking a look at the explosion 
of information happening by November. I think that with the Clinton Chronicle tape out there, we're going to have a billion, 200 and 10. What's this? What's this? I hear it's the uh, ring. Uh, did you, did you bring that? The bells? The bells? The bells? Oh, that's the church. It's got to be the church next door. Right. We interrupt this program with a special bulletin. America is now under martial law. All constitutional rights have been suspended. Stay in your home. Do not attempt to contact loved ones, insurance agents, or attorneys. Shut up. Do not attempt to think or depression may occur. Stay in your home. Curfew is at 7 p.m. sharp after work. Anyone caught outside the gates of their subdivision sectors after curfew will be shot. Remain calm. Do not panic. Your neighborhood watch officer will be by to collect urine samples in the morning. Anyone caught interfering with the collection of urine samples will be shot. Stay in your home. Remain calm. The number one enemy of progress is question. National security is more important than individual will. All sports broadcasts will proceed as normal. No more than two people may gather anywhere without permission. Use only the drugs prescribed by your boss or supervisor. Shut up! Be happy! Obey all orders without question. The comfort you demanded is now mandatory. Be happy. At last, everything is done for you. 